All right, so we're here in Music Messe 2015. We're now at the Nectar booth, and with me is Tim, product manager of the great Panorama keyboards, and uh, they have some great news, and Tim will explain what's new and what's happening here. So I give it over to Tim. Hi. Hi. So um, new for Music Messer, we've announced Cubase 1.5 integration. Um, now integration is a word that's commonly abused by many MIDI controller manufacturers uh, in the sense that integration for, for a lot of MIDI controllers is basically just a simple mixer, volumes, pans, and then some, uh, some mute and solo if you're lucky, and then six transport controls. Now, of course, we've got all of that stuff, but our integration uh, goes the whole way. You get control of your FX sends, of your inserts, um, of positioning your loop points in the sequencer, all stuff that's really, really important that genuinely does take away the need to reach for the mouse and the QWERTY controller um, throughout the time. We go, we, we go so far as to say that really these should be considered as door controllers. I think if you call a panorama or refer to a panorama as a MIDI controller, you're almost underselling it. Um, the amount of work that goes into this integration, we're talking sometimes up to 12 months, it's like a full product cycle because each door that we integrate for is a unique proje project completely. It's a whole new product cycle. So essentially what we've done with Cubase 1.5 is enhanced what is, a, what is effectively a dedicated controller for Steinberg's Cubase door. Um, of course, we've supported many other doors, um, but in this case, we're going to look at Steinberg. And in particular, we're going to look at our plugin integration. Now, you've probably heard a lot of talk about so-called smart controllers, which are coming out um, recently from other manufacturers. Um, these smart controllers tend to work by offering a, um, a piece of software, uh, like a plug-in host, that you load on every single track in your door. And they, they then control that plug-in host. They're not controlling your plug-in, they're controlling your plug-in host, or their plug-in host. So they're giving themselves a solution, if you like. Um, and the problem with that is, oh, is fairly obvious from the start. You have to have the host on every single track in your door. And that means that it's not going to work with the existing projects that you have. It's not going to work unless you have that door installed on computers away from the one that you're working on normally. Um, and the nice thing about the Panorama integration is because it's a door controller and it does everything through the door, it's all completely transparent. There's no plug-in host, there's no wrappers. Everything we do is through the door, so it will just pick up from any projects that you've already been working on. You get, you get the Panorama, you plug it in with the integration installed, and then it will just pick up all of your plugins in your track. We then customize our mapping of plugins. Uh, we've done a 600, roughly, I think, um, so far. I lose count. Um, in the same way we map like dedicated door integration for Cubase, we map dedicated integration for plugins, each plugin in independently. So it would be impossible to obviously buy a dedicated controller for every plugin that you own on your system. You know, you just have too many controllers. Um, whereas the Panorama, because the integration's dedicated to specific plugins, it's probably the next best thing. So we're just going to look at how that works now. Um, here I've got complete control running which is a host plugin, and um, it hosts other plugins. We've got Native Instruments FM8 running with inside complete control. And we're just going to look at how Panorama um, is able to control that. Three modes of our door integration, mixer, instrument, transport. So we press the instrument button, up comes complete control, and then all of the parameters. Now, what's important to see here is these are eight common parameters. These, we've, we've, we've already got a map. We've, we've customized mapping for FM8 already. And as a result, when I press the menu button, you can see on top of those eight useful controls, I have all of the parameters modulized into, uh, into a whole menu. So to get to the easy controls of FM8, I select the easy menu. To get to the morph, you select the morph. So it's very quick and easy to find your way around the plugin. Um, and the beauty of that, of course, is that, um, well, a lot, of the, a lot of the smart controllers that have come out, it, um, their host their host plugins present parameters in pages of eight, and the pages are just arbitrarily numbered, one to sometimes up to 120, 128. There's, there's, and when you've got a situation like that, it's, it's pretty ridiculous. You know, are you really going to be scrolling through, you know, tens, you know, even 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 sometimes three to four pages is too much because you still don't necessarily know what is on that page. Whereas a menu like this, where you can see very clearly 
um, a, a very clear group of the, the, the controls that you want and you, you select the controls that you want, you know, go down to some effects, do some tremolo, and then, you know, you can find exactly what you're looking for very, very quickly, which makes it incredibly intuitive, and that's why I talk about this being dedicated. This, this menu is for FMA only, it's dedicated, you know, it's customized for a particular plugin, and that's how we work. Um, obviously, Complete Control was developed for um, a, uh, a smart controller being the, the, the Native Instruments Complete Control, which is a very nice controller. Um, however, it is, is of course limited, limited to those eight parameters um, per page, and it doesn't have the menus like we're seeing here. Um, but you can actually control the, the features of uh, complete control that are unique, um, being the ARP and the scale and the, and the chord features. You can see here, Panorama presents them in a nice menu with the ARP controls and the scale controls. Our, um, our TFT display, our color TFT display, allows us to not just modulize parameters, but also present them in a nice, useful, clean way of navigating the plugins as well and the menus. Okay, now of course, like I said, we don't need to have a host plugin. So if I change the track now, you can see another Native Instruments control. And uh, let's go to Massive, a very obvious one. And again, I press the menu button, and here's all my controls modulized. You can see I, can, I want to control the filter. I hit the filter. I can control the filters. I can control the filters, um, flick between filter one and two. You want to go to, let's pick out a random control, something like oscillator two intensity menu, oscillators. And there it is, two. It's very quick and easy to find a control, often quicker than looking in the software itself. Let me just press the view button. Nice novel little thing about panorama. You can open and close the windows in your door from, from depending on what's in here, that's what you can open. And on, and on massive you can see here, let's say for example I want to control envelope four. Using the mouse, that would be like this. You have to go down, you have to find the envelope. I think it's here. And then you've got to look at the parameter you want. With uh, the panorama, like I said, we're not limited to eight controls page, pages. We've got the entire control surface in each mode, mixer instrument transport. Entire control surface is, is, is working on that plugin. So I can go down, you can see here, if I select envelopes, my envelopes, just like in Massive, are, are seen on the envelope page. So it's very quick and easy to find your way around. And what's also important to think about with this is a lot of the time you're not even looking. Never mind not using the mouse and the query. You're not even looking at the display. And when you're creative and you're in your, your music um, element and, you know, Workflow is so important. You, you want to do everything here. You don't want to have to keep breaking workflow and reaching over here. Workflow is a, t is a word that is just so much, again, it's another word as well as integration that is commonly abused by MIDI, <laughs> MIDI controller manufacturers. So, and work, but workflow is really key uh, for us. And as a, as a, as a keyboard player, we, I mean, we look at our door integration for the product that we're, we're manufacturing. In this case, it's a keyboard. So we focus our, our uh, integration on how we feel a keyboard player would want to work. It's all about workflow. Um, so if I go to mixer mode, you can see that I've got um, obviously the usual mixer, as you'd expect. But then we've got these controls down here, which are um, which are focused on the selected track. If I change the track, and I've got some EQ on. You see, I can enable some EQ. I can turn turn some low end. That's a lot of low end. <laughs> um, and you see, as I, if I change the track, it updates to be for the selected track that I've got there. So you always know. Whatever, whatever, whatever you want to do in your door, I have my selected the, but inserts, FX sends, channels. I can even add inserts on the fly, so I can change plugins. You know, add, add Absinthe Five to on top of um, on top of Massive now, and then you can flick between them. Look between the instrument, which is Massive now, and the Absinthe Five. If I if I hit the edit buttons, you can see what we're doing here. I've got my envelope of uh, Massive and my controls of the. Um, of Absinthe now as well. So, one little button, I'm switching between VSTFX, VST Instruments, the navigation's very intuitive, very quick, very easy. And you can see what I mean by the workflow. It's um, greatly enhanced by, by having a panorama. So, um, will this be a free update for? Yes, it's always, everything we do, this continues to evolve, this product. It was released in 2012, and it continues to evolve with new door support. The door support that's already out there is evolved. This is 1.5 of Cubase integration. I want to show you dynamic plugin mapping because this is uh, this is something that's that's particularly uh, important, I think, to um, to what we've done to this particular update. 
Now with, with, with contacts, this is an example of what I mean by dynamic uh, plugins. It means that when you, certain patches have different controls. Okay? <laughs> okay. Um, so, yeah, so, so different patches have different parameters presented to you and not, not a lot of controllers can handle that. But basically what you do with Panorama, you can see if I, I've got this patch here and what I'm going to do when I press the menu button, if you're used, to, if you're used to Panorama's Cubase support, then you may be aware that for the plugins that we haven't mapped, you know, if it's not one of the 600, then you can map your own. But you used to be limited to just the eight encoders, the nine faders, and the eight encoders, which is a lot of control. But we're now giving you four pages of these as well, so you've got a lot of control for your own maps that you can make. Um, and similarly, for any patch of contact, which is an example of dynamic, Guitar Rig is another one, an example of a dynamic plugin that changes per patch. You can map um, the parameters for your patch, really customize the controller, not just for that instrument, but for that one patch. So for example, I'm gonna go down to um, the last page here, and I'm gonna say I wanna map, um, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna hit learn, shift menu if you've already done a map, because there's already a map done for this one. Um, and I'm gonna put the resonance down on here picks it up straight away. When I'm done, I just have to hit save. And that means now, when I come back to that patch, I don't have to load it back in again. It will automatically, Panorama's intelligent enough, smart enough, if you like, to, uh, to load in that patch automatically. So all those parameters will be back there next time I come back to this patch. I change the patch in, uh, in contact. Everything updates for me straight away. When contact loads, the, the really big patch is obviously coming now. So again, you can see you've got completely different parameters, but Panorama has picked them up and I can control them straight away. Let's try going back to, back to the patch I was on. Isn't it nice to be able to control patches from the, the controller as well? <laughs> Yeah, so, and again, it, it works in a similar way. Um, on here, you can see we've got, we, we've got um, not many assigns. Um, so let's just assign one. Let's do it the other way. So I'm going to stick this onto, onto here. And it, it updates straight away. You know, every single time the parameters change, Panorama updates with it. So, and that's how it works. And that will, again, be remembered for that patch. So that's dynamic plugin mapping. It's, there's a lot going on there. It's quite complicated, um, but it's actually well. So we're doing all the complicated and hard work for you. It's making workflow very, very simple.